Is there a difference between generic spirituality and Bible-believing Christianity? Ladies and gentlemen, your friend Spencer here. I want to talk about Switchfoot for just a little bit. They seem to be a band that comes up a lot in my study and research of the issues with contemporary Christian music and its apostasy in these last days. I have here in my hand the lyrics to a song called I Won't Let You Go. Please allow me to read just a little bit of this to you. When it feels like surgery and it burns like third degree and you wonder what it's worth. When your inside's breaking and you feel that ache again and you wonder... What's giving birth? If, you're, if you could let the pain of the past go of your soul, none of this is in your control. If you could only let your guard down, you could learn to trust me somehow. I swear that I won't let you go. If you could only let go your doubts, if you could just believe in me somehow, I swear I won't let you go. I won't let you go. And there's some oohs and ahs in there as well. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the issue with Switchfoot and why I don't listen to Switchfoot is not really that there's a bunch of bad in this song is that, that there's really not anything that's Bible-believing Christianity in this song. These songs are designed to be generic and vague so that they can appeal to a secular crowd and a sacred crowd. This band is a prime example of people trying to be a crossover artist, secular and sacred at the same time, which is the thesis of my book, Calling Evil Good, The Live Christian Rock and Roll. We see in the last days that there's a, a grand merging of the secular and the sacred of the church and the world. The problem is when you merge secular and sacred together, you really don't have anything sacred anymore. What you have is a generic spirituality that appeals to the secular crowd. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I have here printed off the words of that song, but I also have the words printed to some favorite hymns of the faith. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. Alas, and did my Savior bleed and did my sovereign die? Did he devote that sacred head for such a worm as I? King of heaven, my victory won. May I reach heaven's joys, O bright heaven's sun. Heart of my own heart, whatever befall, still be my vision, O ruler of all. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Hold over my being absolute sway. Fill with thy spirit till all shall see. Christ only always living in me. I raise my Ebenezer, hither by thy help I'm come, and I know by thy good pleasure safely I'll arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God. He to rescue me from danger interposed his precious blood. Now, ladies and gentlemen, those are meaningful. Those are those are meaty lyrics is what they are. And the thing is that Switchfoot's lyrics really don't compare to anything like that. These lyrics are very specific. They talk about Christ. They talk about his blood. They talk about the cross of Calvary, how that he died for my sins. I mean, they're very specific. There is no doubt in my mind that they are singing about Jesus Christ when they sing this song. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the problem with this song is you could probably take these words and with very minor changes, sing this to your girlfriend. You could sing this to your wife. I mean, this, this could be very easily be changed into a love song between a man and a woman. This is so generic and vague, I really don't even know how they call it Christian. Now, it's not that this song's immoral and that this song's wicked. And it's not, it's, this isn't a gangster rap song. But it's not really a Christian song that has Christian doctrine in it. it just, it's just not there. I cite in my book, Calling Evil Good, The Live Christian Rock and Roll, in chapter number two, that there are several sociology studies that have been done on the religiosity of American people. And a hundred years ago, they said that like 98% of Americans believe that there was a God in heaven. Now that number has dwindled down to about 93%. But they did another study where they said, do you believe that in this phrase that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven? Well, I believe years ago, they said it was 77% said that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven, but today they said it's about 40% that say that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. Now those numbers are significant because what we have today is that people generally still believe that there is a higher power, that there is a God, but they don't believe that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven, which means that the American Christianity or the American religion of today is not Bible-based anymore. It's just a generic idea that, yeah, we believe in a higher power, but we don't really get specific on the doctrinal side of all of that. That means that we have a generic spirituality in this country. The lead singer of Switchfoot is named John Foreman, and he gave a weird answer to a question about Switchfoot being a Christian band. And in that statement, he said this. He said, my life will be judged by my obedience, not my ability to confine my lyrics to this box or that.
basically they got under fire a little bit because their songs were Christian and then they weren't Christian. They were Christian and they weren't Christian. And so he's saying that I don't want to confine my lyrics to this box or that. What he's trying to say is he's saying that I just want my lyrics to be generic. I don't want them to be bound to any specific box. And what he means by that is a box that looks like this. He doesn't want his lyrics to be bound by the Bible. What are you saying? And ladies and gentlemen, this is the time that we live in. People want a generic spirituality, but they do not want to be bound by any box of doctrine whatsoever. They just want to feel good about a higher power and believe in a higher power, but they don't want to get any more specific than that. That's what they want. If you're going to believe in the God of the Bible, you have to be specific, and that's what doctrine does. Doctrine whittles it all down to where you can say, no, this is wrong, and this is right, and that's what the Bible does for you. And so the issue with Switchfoot is really not even one about music. It's much bigger than that. It's the issue of a generic, vague spirituality that is willing to acknowledge the presence of a higher power, but doesn't want to get any more specific than that versus Bible-believing Christianity that wants to be very specific about who the Savior is, who the Son of God is, and the specific way to heaven. And these two are not the same. They're not the same, and you can't say that they are. And ladies and gentlemen, that's the issue. The issue with Switchfoot and the issue with much of modern so-called Christian music today is that it's so weak and vague, you can't even really use it. And I don't even know how they classify this stuff as Christian music anymore. And so ladies and gentlemen, Switchfoot are very skilled. They are very talented. I think that they deserve to be recognized for the talent, the musical talent that they are. They have a euphoria to them. They have an emotional appeal to their music. But you cannot say that this is a Christian band because... If you were to put them on trial using only lyrics to these songs like this, if you were to put them on trial and accuse them of being a Christian band, there's not enough evidence in these lyrics to get a solid conviction. But what do I know? I'm just a guy with the Bible. A box, if you will. And I don't mind being bound by it.